imagine what it would take to make this journey. Driven by poverty and desperation, crammed in the back of a truck, the searing heat, the desert wind. Imagine your truck breaks down and you are stranded in the middle of the Sahara Desert in Niger, abandoned with no water, just an endless expanse of sand. It really only takes a few moments in the back of one of these trucks to begin to gain an appreciation of just how tough it is out here. We're on a mission with the Nigerian army to rescue stranded migrants. Our convoy will stop when one truck is in trouble. The smugglers carrying the migrants will not. Finally, after 10 hours driving through the desert, light signal. The migrants have been stranded here for three days after their truck broke down. There are about 30 in all, left to die. The women who don't want their identities revealed are wearing the local Islamic headdress because the smugglers told them to, so they can blend in. The women are Christian and mostly from Nigeria and say they had no idea about the dangers of the road, but that they were lured by a Facebook page. And what did this Facebook page say? What were they promising you? I saw job opportunities and I, I saw good life there, you know? Most often, the dream they are sold is a scam to get female migrants to Europe and then force them into prostitution. As we speak, one of the women starts praying under her breath. Jesus. A single sentence over and over. We can hear the agonizing wails of another woman and go to speak to her. I heard you crying. Her name is Olabisi. Two of her four children, it seems, were on another truck. They are the older ones, ages just nine and eleven. I just thought it was my kid. I put her to death behind. Falalu Lawalo, with the International Organization for Migration, tells her husband that they have a local office close to where they think the children were taken and that they will try to track them down. But if the children continue on... It's only at daybreak that we truly understand the remoteness of where we are. The migrants ready themselves. They pile into the back of the trucks. They are reluctant to leave. They want to keep going to Libya. Olabisi is hardly able to believe what has happened to them. As the convoy departs, she does not yet know if Falalu will be able to track down her children. We learn that three days later he did, and the family was reunited. This is a place of death and deceit. For many, the decent life promised beyond the Sahara and across the sea in Europe, it's only a mirage.